What's up, More Than Fitness family? I'm your host, Adrian Conway, and it's been a minute, so I'm glad to be back with you. Today, I'm bringing you an episode with Masters athlete Mike Kern. Now, Mike is a six-time CrossFit Games athlete and a three-time second finish, yes, on the podium athlete. He's been in the space for quite a while, since 2013, and um, he's coming up on, you know, uh, 11 plus years of competing in the space. Um, and not just that, but he actually owns CrossFit Garden City. Um, he's, he's a co-owner there and has watched that community grow and thrive over time. He actually took the reins and became a partner within that business at a very volatile time within our space, within our world. It was in 2019 that he bought in and became uh, a part owner of that affiliate. So I'm sure that you're going to get a lot from the lessons that he learned, his involvement there. Um, in this interview, particularly, we range our topic of discussion from Mike's personal growth um, in the sport, meaning how he's navigated his training, his mindset. And we even have in the later part of our interview, which you'll have to stick around for, our nutrition discussions. When did he actually start to weigh and measure his food? And what was that like for him in regards to a realization on how it influences not only his performance, but also his day in and day out recovery? He talks about how he navigates training volume, training intensity. And because this is more than fitness, we talk a lot more than that. Mike is a girl dad. He's got three daughters. And he talks about the influence that kind of growing up in and around CrossFit has had on their lives and hopefully what that will do for them in the future. He talks about balancing his training with family life and also training with coaching. Um, as you, many of you know that listen to this as a coach or as an affiliate member, you lean heavily on your coaches. And sometimes we have a hard time remembering when someone should probably be off limits from advice or stopping them or pausing them in the middle of their own training session because we want to be heard or have a question answered ourselves. Well, equally, it's important for coaches to learn how to draw lines and create some type of distinction between their own training time and the time that they're training you. But Mike alludes to the fact that He's very much a people person, loves to communicate and help his members. And that's been a bit of a struggle for him. So I think that you'll also find value there. And of course, we talk about as we record this episode here, September 28th, that we don't really know what's on the horizon for the age group uh, categories at the CrossFit Games for 2024. So Mike even talks about how he feels about that and really how that doesn't have much of a deterrent on his preparation and or his training because he loves CrossFit so much that he'd be doing it the same even if no one could see his scores or see the outcome. So folks, we dive into it all. I will leave you no further wondering about the interview and I'll let you dive straight in. Thanks for joining us today on the More Than Fitness Podcast. Here is Mike Kern. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of More Than Fitness. It's been quite a while since we connected, but I am glad to be back. And I am joined by none other than perennial games athlete, Mike Kern. Mike, how are you today, man? I'm doing good. Good. Appreciate having me on here. Yeah, man. Well, it was important for me to sit down with you and I wanted to catch up. You know, you're someone within the space that I've become very familiar with because as I've continued to age up within our sport, man, I've started to pay more attention to who's been to the games a bunch in the age group categories. Who's been to the Masters competition in different levels and who has been in the game for a long time and evolved as the sport has continued to evolve? And you were someone that absolutely came to mind. Um, I know that you're an affiliate owner and I know that you've been in the space for a while, which are, are things that I certainly want to get into um, as we dive into our discussion today, Mike. But first and foremost, man, um, what does training look like for you right now at your current age and uh, where you're at in life? Uh, current age, yes. Yeah. So current age, I'm 47, turning 48, or CrossFit 48. Um, but my training right now, I mean, we're in the off season, but um, just trying to ramp it up. I got off season comps just like the regular individuals. So I, I got a big comp in December. Uh, so my training is I, I'm, I've licked my wounds after the games for about a month or so. And now it's getting back into I go about 90 minutes a day. Um, that's my goal to try to get everything done. Um, I got a lot of other responsibilities between the affiliate coach and being a stay at home dad that sometimes I can't get that full 90 minute window or an hour and 20 minute all together. But I pick and choose what I could get to. But um, right now I get my Metcon and my strength and uh, hopefully a little accessory. I try to do it three pieces roughly. 
Uh, but it, some days, you know, it, it, it's a balance. I got to juggle stuff with the kids and life. And sometimes my training gets pushed aside. But I feel like I got a decent enough base. I could get it all, get what I need to get done in. And other days, I'll just make up what I got to do. I love it. And, and, and I really love that you even highlighted it early on. It's like, hey, I've got off-season competitions that I also participate in. What is it that you're getting ready for in December? I got uh, Legends coming up. I've done that the past couple of years. That's a pretty big... One of the big, uh, obviously, off-season masters competitions. Um, this year, it's in Arizona, Tempe, uh, on the campus. So they do a good job. They've done. Uh, I oh, I almost was going to do MFC. That's actually coming up this weekend, but it was a little too close. I was a little nicked up coming out of the games. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, I'm I guess two months out of that. I did that last year, and it's funny. Like being a, I'll say, a games athlete. We got our off-season comps, we kind of look at that as like, oh, just kind of temperature check, get back in it, uh, see where we are before the game season ramps up. But we run into guys who haven't made the games, and those off-season comps are their games. Yeah. And last year, I ran into a bunch of guys that just handed me my ass or handed me my head in uh, workout after workout. And I'm like, you know, I can't walk into, I can't just roll into these. It's, yeah, I may be a perennial games athlete, but if I'm not training to where I should be training, there's other guys that are working hard. Um, so it's a good test. It's a good test. And I won't underestimate it this year coming in. So I definitely, uh, uh, you know, want to ramp up and hit that good this year, have a good show and try to get, you know, on the podium, try to get on the top of the podium. Yeah, I love that. And every time you, you compete, you know, you're going to do the very best that you've got, right? It's not like you're going to hold back. It's not like you're going to show up and say like, hey, you know, I'm going to leave a little bit on the table here in these tests and I'm going to go all out on these tests. It's you're going to show whatever fitness you currently have and do your very best. But Mike, how do you? Um, yeah, that's all right. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. How do you, how do you balance um, essentially being able to know that you're not maybe your fittest going into a competition like legends in December and navigate that as a checkup competition versus the expectations that you might have, like you have done in the previous six times that you've been to the CrossFit games. How do you kind of navigate the emotional and psychological ups and downs uh, that come with when you know, like, okay, this isn't my only focus as a competition. This might not be my highest focus as a competition, but I still got to test myself and see where I'm at. It's, it's definitely a challenge. I mean, cause I mean, you'll go in knowing that I'm a little, little heavier, a little, you know, a little softer, you know, uh, but same thing. Once the competition's on, you're like, hey, I'm here to compete. So you have your expectations of where you should be, where you shouldn't be. Um, and it's, a, it's, it, it's hard. It, like last year at Legends, I was falling out of the final heat and I okay. couldn't get back. So like day one, I had a bad day one and they have a big feel. That's another thing. Like Legends has a big feel. We have like 30 guys out there. So if you have a clunker of a workout, it's hard to recover because you just took a 20 something on something. Um, that you, you know, went sideways on you. And I couldn't get back into the final heat. And I didn't like it. I like I'm used to being in one of the top heats and it it messed with my head. I was like, I'm I knew I was going in and the final heat was behind me and I'm setting the target. I'm setting the time to beat. And I would watch that late later heat, just you know, a couple reps more. Like I could throw the wall ball. If you tell me where I gotta get to with a wall ball, I could hang on for one extra. So that kind of was really like a, a mindset, like it, it messed with me a lot and it was hard to kind of shake it. And but it was a good thing. I was like, hey, it showed me you just can't roll up and whatever. It doesn't matter where your fitness level is, like everybody's there to compete at three, two, one. So it's got to be an all out effort. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, and, and, and I think the reason I asked that question specifically is because I think there's a lot of athletes out there, particularly as we age up where we start to understand that, you know, we've only got a couple hair hell Marys each year, right? We can only really peak ourselves just a few times, but that it's still important, especially as masters athletes that maybe haven't had the competitive experience as some of the individual athletes that then age up to become masters. Like they don't have that same amount of experience. So it is important to throw their hat in the ring or participate with the community and to put themselves out there. But of course, balancing personal expectations and those psychological ups and downs, man, can be a trick all into itself. So I appreciate the way that you kind of laid that out and shared that. Um, now to everybody that listening, I got to be honest with you. We're recording this on September 28th of the year, 2023. Now we are in a bit 
of a tough spot when it comes to being an age group athlete, folks. We've concluded the CrossFit Games for 2023, and we're looking forward on the horizon. We just found out that the CrossFit Games are going to be in Fort Worth, Texas next year in 2024, but we don't know what that means for the age group divisions. Mike, as someone that's been there six times, and you've really structured a lot of your life around CrossFit in itself. You teach it. Um, you're a great example to aging demographics and, and anyone that looks up to you. Um, has this affected your motivation at all for the year to come or your training, not knowing exactly what awaits you for 2024? Oh, I mean, a little bit. Um, but I mean, I love CrossFit. So I get like if there was no CrossFit games, I would still be doing CrossFit. Maybe I would dial back. The volume, like, you know, you don't have to try to PR your snatch or clean and jerk, et cetera. But it is a little like there is a little motivation like that kind of wanes when, uh, you know, we saw the Fort Wayne, not for uh, Fort Worth announcement for uh, the CrossFit Games. And then in my master's community, we have our chat groups and text groups and we're checking in and we're like, we're probably not in for, you know, Fort Worth. That's not going to be us. And then one of my buddies, who's a competitor up in the 50 to 54, he was like, what am I training for? If it, and I'm like, well, you know, I fully, you know, we hear the rumors. I fully expect to be something, you know, there'll be some target for us to go to. Um, hopefully it's still the CrossFit Games, but I understand the logic of what the, the main stage is trying to do. They're trying to make it more nimble so it could travel better. Um, but I think we have a good platform and, you know, we should be able to stand on our own if we can't, you know, maybe we're not, uh, worth it. Um, but I think we, you know, I am fully training thinking like there's going to be something there. There's going to be some target for that. And if it's not, if it becomes like, Hey, it goes away. Then I just put more eggs in the bat basket of legends and Wadapalooza and, you know, uh, MFC. Um, I mean, I got, I, for me, I'm a competitive person, so. I got to have like, you know, just like somebody who's a runner does races, they need a target to train for. I'll need something. So if the games goes away, I got to find something else that, you know, kind of, you know, train towards. So just my nature. No, and I get it, man. Listen, men will die for points, right? Greg Glassman identified that early on when he created this methodology of constantly varied functional movements at high intensity. You gamify it. You quantify it by putting a time, by putting a load, by putting a score, and all of a sudden it brings the greatest out of us. Um, it helps us rise to a level of intensity or a level of training that we normally wouldn't just buy ourselves and if it didn't matter. So I appreciate that perspective, and I, and I think you, know, you, you say something, Mike, that is extremely – uh, it gives me a breath of fresh air when I hear someone say, you know, if it wasn't for the CrossFit Games, I'd still be showing up to the gym tomorrow. And if it wasn't for the CrossFit Games and if no one ever knew the score that I was getting on this workout, I'm still going to sell my soul to it because that's just who I am and what I'm about. Right. And I think that someone who's growth mindset fixed like yourself, where you you look forward and you're like, OK, hey, there's a challenge. I'm going to go try to achieve that challenge or get the, the most out of myself. It's so much of what brings our community together and our culture and what has created this uniqueness across the world. And why I think we personally can change it is because we're some of the biggest movers and drivers within the space. You know, when we look from the inside out um, I think a lot of times you notice things that are intrinsically different about CrossFitters, but um, I I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm very curious about what the 2024 season um, will entail for the age groups. And I do have a, a great hope and a great vision for us still having an opportunity to crown the fittest in each age group. Maybe it works out so we get to have more athletes participating in it. Maybe it's not at the same venue. I don't know. Um, but I'm hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll be sitting back and maybe when it's even time for us to release this episode, we'll, we'll know by then. And then it'll be a bit more of a, a clear road to, uh, to where you want to end up. Um, where did all of this start for you, Mike? It seems like your life... Like I, I, I'd be hard pressed to find out that you're like, Hey, I, I never did anything competitive before CrossFit. I was not, I, I wasn't a, I, I wasn't a very motivated individual prior to refining this. That I would be hard pressed to imagine that in you, but I'm very curious as to how you got started in CrossFit and where this journey all began. Uh, yeah. How I got started. I don't, um, it was back in 2012. I was kind of out of shape. I was, uh, Back in my college days, I was a college athlete. I did uh, football and wrestled for my college. Um, but it's been a long time since then, and I was a new dad. I had, I think my second daughter was just born. I have three daughters now. 
Um, and I don't know if it was, I was a very supportive husband and I had a lot of sympathy weight for my <laughs> wife during her pregnancy, but I guess I didn't shed mine as quickly as my wife did. Um, and she was the one who kind of suggested like, Hey, let's do the, you know, this CrossFit, there's a gym down the street. And at that point I never even heard of CrossFit. I didn't know what the heck she was talking about, but she's like, no, I think it's good. It's good. And we went and watched, like, it was a free trial. I walked into the gym and I saw what was going on. I was like, this is, this is cool. I like this. And we started together in our foundations of January, 2013. And uh, it kind of relit my competitive. Again, I played sports growing up, and but it was been some time since that competitive fire was lit. Um, and very quickly on into CrossFit, I was like, this, this, this is, this, this stoked some fires in that I thought were like long, you know, from my early twenties gone. And I started at age 36. And uh, yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. I was just like, this is it for me. A month later, one of the coaches mentioned something about an open. I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And we signed up and I was like, here we go. And that was it. I was hooked. I was, you know, leaderboarding with my own affiliate, chasing young guys, trying to keep up. But that was, I mean, I was hooked. I was hooked and became like a CrossFit junkie, trying to get all the content I could see back on the old YouTube days, whatever was out there back then. Um, but that was it. I was just like, this is, this is it for me. And I kind of went all in. Oh, that's a beautiful thing, man. And, and I think, you know, a lot of our listeners can relate as, as to myself as well. Um, I, I found it in 2011 and, and, and it was because of the competition side of things. It was me seeing Rich Froning be crowned the fittest on earth or seeing Graham Holmberg the year before and being like, man, I, I think I could do what those guys are doing. I, I got to like, this, this, this is my next step. After I was done playing some arena football, this was the next step for me. Then it was very natural for me to dive headlong into not just the training, but also the different practices. You know, you mentioned, hey, scouring YouTube, probably scouring at the time, the CrossFit Journal, right? Going back and, and just looking and, and unpeeling back the layers. Um, I know that now you're the co-owner of a gym, right? So, mm -hmm. so you're the co-owner of Garden City CrossFit. Or CrossFit Garden City. CrossFit Garden City, yep. CrossFit Garden City. And uh, long-time affiliate. So when you think back to like your your the way that you fell in love with the methodology, the way that you fell in love with the competition, how long was it for you to take those steps into then getting your level one and having the, the uh, intention to like train, or I'm sorry, not just train, but also coach and influence the lives of others? Yeah, uh... I mean, very early on, I could, like, I would look at the coaches as like I put them on pedestals, and I was like, they, like the, the, you know, the, you know, my other owners, Dennis Marshall and Jen, they're on seminar staff, um, so I, I felt I, I, I stepped in it. We have a great affiliate, great program, great core, um, but I, I was probably two years in, and I was like, you know what, maybe like, uh, maybe I like to get into this coaching, dabble a little bit. I was one of the older but i was one of the better athletes i could start doing stuff and not that it's all about like hey if you can't do those who can't do cheats whatever like i loved it and i was like you know what i would like to get my level one maybe open up a coaching opportunity so i did the level one probably about two years in and then do you remember who do you remember who taught your level one my level one uh was dennis and jen oh, and that's cool. i think james hobart was on that that uh that staff so they were yeah, because we would we were a big gym, so we hosted them as well. So I'm like, all right, when it comes up in our gym, we host. That's an easy commute for the weekend. Um, so I did the level one. Maybe a year or so later, I did my level two, and I was working full time for an insurance company uh, for like 17 years in the city. So I was doing that, getting burned out. Uh, looking for a change, talk with Dennis. And uh, also my kids were getting to be the age where it's like, we were, my wife's a teacher, so we're both working. We're going to have to start getting, when they were getting to school age, before care, after care. Yep. So then it was, my wife put it to me like, hey, would you ever want to like get involved in the gym and be home and be raising the kids? And I, I kind of like, yeah, I, uh, that, I wouldn't mind that. I, uh, so I jumped at that. I left the corporate world and started coaching. And then a couple of years later, right, right around 2019, um, opportunity presented itself to actually become from a coach to one of the owners as well. Uh, a little poor time to get jump into the affiliate business right before COVID, <laughs> but uh, I was going to say, we, yeah, that was a unique time for sure. Yeah, but we uh, adjusted and rallied and kind of bounced back. But it, it is kind of you know that from just a member to a coach to an affiliate owner, that's you know something that uh, you know I 
I, I can't just walk in like I used to and be like, I'm just going to walk in and train. Because now I walk in and if something needs restocking or something's not working, I get pulled in different different uh, different uh, avenues. So it's it's, but it's I wouldn't change a thing. I love it. I love being part of the community, part of the affiliate. Um, I love being a part that I could say that even to my kids, like, yeah, this is our gym. It's our gym. You know, whatever. We own a part of this. This is it, it's a very big part of my life, and I hold it very special. And the people that are in the community, I wouldn't be where I am without them. It's it's phenomenal. So. Yeah, you love to hear, it, man. And and I know that owning an affiliate is not an easy. Uh, venture, right? It's challenging. Um, it's it's very community driven, and not that any business is easy. But you know, when you're trying to lead a culture um, or or shift or shape a culture, um, there's humans involved, and that makes it really complicated, man. What was it like for you stepping onto a team um, where there were already owners and, and involved and invested, and and joining that as you know, the, the steam for the affiliate was already built and already really rolling in a great direction. What was it like for you to kind of come onto the team as a newbie? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There was like, it was like, a, I'll say a well-oiled machine. And then I jumped on and then the COVID happened. And, uh, you know, we kind of reshuffled some things. We went, did our Zoom classes and stuff like that. And then we had a big team of coaches at the time too. And then once COVID hit, it was like, well, I signed up to be an owner and next thing you know, it's like me, Dennis and Jen are coaching every class just to kind of mm. make, uh, so that was an adjustment, but again, just coaching more than I really initially planned on it. I, it, it was a lot in the beginning, but it, it totally ingrained it with the community. And for me also, it's like, if I love coaching and sometimes like you take it for granted, like, and like when I don't coach as often, then I kind of like get back in, like you forget what you, you know, it's great being in there, doing the whiteboard thing, having that, like knowing the members. Um, you could, you know, ask them about the days. You know what they're doing outside the walls because you're so close to them. It's not like your regular gym. Um, so yeah, being the newbie, like I felt like I had maybe eight years under my belt already. So like, and the community accepted me. It was like, who's this outsider coming in? But you know, I still I hold Dennis and Jen on this pedestal still. Like you know, and so. You know, even though, I, you know, I guess we're co-owners together, I'm still like, all right, well, what do you guys think we do? I still, you know, go to oh, them sure. and lean on them heavily. So um, I completely understand that. I can relate. I mean, even as members of seminar staff, I, I, I they're they're on a very high pedestal in my own opinion. I've been on seminar staff for 10 years now. Uh, and, and it's like when I when I look at those two and, and what they've done and how long they've been around and the. The, the seminars they've led and what they've done within our space and the influence that they've had is, is I, I completely agree and can relate there. Mike, when it comes to you coaching and also being an athlete, because this, this relates to everyone. I mean, not even competitors, but when you're an owner, you're a leader within a space, you coach classes, but you got to have your time to train too. How do you balance those things? And have you, have you developed a system that helps you draw lines and help your members understand like, okay, guys, Hey, when I got the headphones on, it's no, it's not, I'm not coach Mike. I'm athlete Mike. Let me be athlete Mike. Or is it like, you know, a certain time of day? What is it for you? For honestly, that's probably what I struggle with the most for. Like people are like, you're too nice. My other buddies are like, you're too nice. Like, I, you know, you got to get your training in. I'm like, ah, like I, I like being social. Like, um, yes, I, I coach in the morning. As of next week, I got to go back to the five and 6 a.m. Because we had coaches leave. So that me and Dennis got to take the early shift. Um, that's part of being the owner. Don't like the early shift. But I normally coach at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. And then I would be able to train starting at 11. Um, that would be my sweet spot. Uh, train from 11 to right before the 1230 class starts and maybe get a little something extra. But I that's my ideal time, that 90 minute window. And then if I need something extra, but a lot of times, yeah, I, I don't do that hard. Like, hey, you know, I'm training this. Like, I uh, people do kind of get it, but if stuff comes up and we're like, hey, you want me to show you how to do that? Yeah, let's work on that. You know, um, I def I default a lot or defer to you know. I know everybody's like, you got to make yourself priority. I do make myself priority, but being the gym owner and the affiliate and just a good all around part of the community, I like being. You know, that's a priority too. Um, so it's hard. I don't have those walls. Maybe. That's the difference. I know to be the tip of the spear or the top, I want to get to the top of the, the podium one day. I can't get over this hump. Um, maybe that's the difference. Um, mm, and mm. it's a line I got to draw. But, I, you know, at this point, I'm like, uh, 
I know I gotta set those boundaries. My time is precious, but again, I I, uh, I like I like my setup. I like being in with the group, in with the community, and I get my work done. But maybe I gotta uh, you know be a little more defined with those. Like yeah, like you said, if the headphones are on, I quickly take an earbud out. Like what'd you say? But maybe it's like no 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 no, they're in, they're in. So. We'll yeah, it's, it's hard, man. When I when I was managing and, and leading an affiliate at Wasatch CrossFit and still in the heyday of my competitive years where I was I was trying to make runs at, at the games as an individual or on a team. And um, boy, it was that was a hard balance for me. You know, it was really hard. I think fortunately enough, I was able to get most of my training done during the closed hours of the gym. Right. So I'm either coming in after those early morning classes and sliding in before those 9 a.m. classes kind of get rolling. The gym gets busy at that point. And then the same time was like that middle of the day for me where it might hit, you know, 1 p.m. after that noon class and till about three was like always some really good primetime training for me. Um, yeah, because it's like, you know, when you sign up, and when I, when I say sign up, I mean, when you get invested as a gym owner or you are a leader within the space, it just kind of comes with it, man. And, and yeah. it's likely within your nature, just like you're sharing, Mike, where it's like you, you find it hard to just shut people down, right? You're like, oh, man, I know I know Chris over here is working on his muscle up and I know he just wants to come in to do some extra work. I, sh I should help him get set up for that drill. Right. Yeah. And, and it almost gets hard for you to just shut it down and be like, OK, I'm, I got to I got to selfishly focus on myself for a bit. And so, like, in, in, so last year, within the last year, I set up some stuff in my garage just so I could be like, because that very thing, I'm like, I know I, I can't walk into the affiliate as athlete, Mike. You know, I, I go in as coach and owner and athlete. Uh, so it's hard to, you know, you're always going in as those three hats. And even if I want to go in, hey, I'm only going in as athlete, Mike. The community doesn't see that. And I don't mind it. So I'm like, if I really need to just get some stuff done, I got a squat rack, I could, you know, get some stuff done in the garage. So that's I'll be like, you know, a little sanctuary at home to try to get some stuff done so yeah. helps me with the balance it does it doesn't it also always opens the door for not necessarily hard conversations but i think also conversations that can lead to you even being another great example to your community because you know without your private time to train your fitness and, and hit the intensity and stimulus that you need to progress your own lifestyle and quality of life and health and of course for you competition you wouldn't be the leader that you are for them and so I think they would easily understand that. But of course, it's all in the delivery. Right. And we learn that. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm learning that in droves with kids myself and um, even being married or even having co-workers or owning a business. It's like it's it's not necessarily what you say. It's how you say it. So delivery is, is always extremely important. Um, as, as we're talking about your training, man, this brings me to another topic in my mind that is extremely important to have as someone who found CrossFit at 36 and you're 12 years, 13 years in almost now. Um, how has training evolved for you from the day you, you started CrossFit, first time you qualified to the CrossFit Games, and then now where you find yourself? Uh, training, yeah, I guess initially I was just group class. I would be group class the whole time. And then back then when we had regionals, we were a pretty competitive affiliate uh, from a team and in some individual regional hopefuls. Um, so I would just get fitter by chasing these, these those our top athletes in group class, the, the leaderboard. After a couple of years, it became like when I was 38, I sat down with Dennis and I was like, I kind of want to make the games. You know, two years out, I was looking ahead. It was 40 at that point was the first first age. And I I, I kind of, you know, circled that. And I was like, had, had a, let's sit down and look at what are my holes. And then it started being group class plus accessory work, a little accessory work. So Dennis would be like, all right, well. He's a very well-rounded programmer, so the group class just itself will get me fit, and then we'll plug some holes with the accessory. Um, and I did that for a number of years, just regular group class and accessory. And then I guess I made the games three years in the 40 divisions, the first year, second year, third year. I just kind of then I took two years off to kind of reset. Um, okay. Seemed like the thing to do. You're getting older in the age group, kind of reset. But then it gets harder to dial it back up when I was a young guy in the 45 again. Um, now, I'm, if I, if you don't mind yeah. me pausing you there, Mike, when you, when you say reset or, or dial it back, what did that look like for you? Were you just training a little less? Was the intensity slightly different? And, and I think this is important because man, we're in this space. We're in this time where athletes have now been in a, in an affiliate like yourself, 15 years, some people, right? 10 years, even six years plus. And there does need to be times and seasons in like, you know, I'm, I'm leaning in. I'm trying to RX all these workouts, 
And then there's other mm-hmm. times where it's like, you know, I got to dial it back. I got to listen to my body. I got to be smart. So when you were dialing it back, what did that look like personally? Yeah, I would just eliminate the extra volume. Like I don't okay. need to be beating my body up. Like I'll take a group class and still ego. I'm probably going to try to RX all the group class sure. workouts. But um, if 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 the if the group class workout had like build to a heavy squat clean, I may not be trying to PR. And I'd be like, you know what? Today, 80% is my heavy. I'm going to you know listen uh, and just go easy. I wouldn't t- for those two years. It was also like a lot of times the game sunk up with a family vacation. And so then for two years, I missed out on a family vacation that my wife and the kids still went to because we have like a lot of extended family. Sure. And that was hard. So it was like for those two years, I was like, hey, I'm going to be there for that family vacation. I'm, so that was important to me, too. Like so the training, the extra volume kind of went away, uh, but I still got to do CrossFit. So I would take the group class and then do whatever I felt like, you know, it was fun or stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, kind of reset with the family. And then know that like, all right, when I get to be the young 45 again, I'm going to start ramping that up again. Um, And then it was only recently, about the last two years is when my training went from like group class and affiliate, I mean, group class and accessory to maybe, you know, everybody's following these programs and the one-on-ones. And I've uh, had some background with Misfit. Uh, I did one of their training camps in like 2017. I always liked uh, liked that group, group of guys. Um, Reached out to them just about maybe remote coaching. Um, and I signed up with them, had a remote coach, uh, Gabe Garcia for a year. And, you know, and then now I'm still training with them. Um, but that was the thing. I kind of was like, all right, well, let's see if I maybe just to be the tip of the spear. Maybe I need, maybe I'm missing something. Am I missing something? Um, and I don't think I was missing something, but I, I love being with Misfit. Like they, they, you know, they gave me the one-on-one coaching, the support group when I'm at the games um and also one of my competitors is also misfit so we kind of we have a daily thing so it's like like affiliate doesn't have the regional games athletes or regional competitors there anymore so now i'm training kind of remotely with misfit but i also have you know guys doing the same workout that i could level up and be like all right i you know i know my score is and he knows you know based on the workout so i do have that kind of competitive even though it is remote so um yeah, that's kind of like the training kind of shifted from group class, group class accessory to, okay, I got a remote coach uh, and I follow a pro- outside programming now, which is tricky in the affiliate as as well. I, again, another very honest conversation that's okay to have, mm-hmm. right? And, and I say that in regards to, you know, there was, there was so much of my life early in my coaching career where I was pursuing physical dominance. And this is how I would describe it to my members. Like I'm really chasing physical dominance. You're chasing physical competence. And I want you to age a little differently. Your trajectory is going to be lower, but it's going to be longer than what I can sustain as a competitor right now. Um, and, and I try to do my very best to not over glorify any competitor within our space, man, we had athletes that were top of the Southwest region at Wasatch CrossFit. We had athletes. I mean, we would go on to win the CrossFit games in 2017. And one of the coolest things I got to say about our affiliate at the time is I kid you not, there were members in our like 5 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. classes that had no idea we had a team going to the CrossFit games that year, right? Like to me, that's really cool because their, their journey was so different than our journey at the time. And we recognize that and that's okay. It's not, you know, the comp- competitive side is not for everyone, but I do think it's an important conversation. And then people are like, Hey, Mike, how dare you? You're not doing the, the class workouts with us every day. And it's like, Hey, you know, coaches need coaches too sometimes. And sometimes that takes us away from what our community is doing or what we deem appropriate for our community so that we can grow in a different direction for a while too. And of course you'll always be back. You'll be back within your community doing the affiliate workouts and doing the thing. But I, uh, I think it's, you know, I think it's really cool that, it's something that that you've had experience with and you recognize the value in even having a coach yourself. Cause I'm sure there was a lot of growth there throughout the years. Mike, have you like strayed further from one type of training and leaned into another type of training more so to help you recover or anything like that? Like what's, what's the theme of training been like for you um, over the last like four to five years? Theme, um, you know, I, in terms of like, my theme is I'll, I'll try to do everything I can. Okay. Um, and I got to listen to the body. Like as a yeah. master, like there's some like more days than I like that, you know, it's hard putting on socks. And like my wife always jokes, like you're one of the top athletes in your division. Like people, and you can barely, you're like, 
crippled, like walking around. Like I have aches and pains like every day, but I'm like, it just, you know, I'm 47. Uh, once I get in the gym and get moving, then I'm like, all right, it's not as bad, not as bad. But um, I don't know. I guess my, my thing is I, I listen to my body more than, than I, I would just kind of head down and plow through when I was younger, earlier on. Now, I don't know if I was ever younger at 36 going in, but uh, my first, you know, half of the years. Now these last back, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to the body more. Um, I feel like I got a good enough base. Um, yeah. Not too many holes. I still got holes in my game. Um, but uh, good enough that, like, I'll get the tr good training days when they're there. And if I got to back off and recover, um, active recovery days, I, like, Thursday's my swim day. Like, so, like, that, I could, that's easy on the body. It's not easy for me to swim, but it's easy on the body, easy on the joints. And, uh, and then I do a full rest days on either Saturday or Sunday, depending on what the family schedule is. Uh, whenever I'll try to get one day training and one day rest, but, uh, that's saying I prioritize that kind of stuff. Like you got, I, I won't push through something that's injury just for the sake of if it's on the spreadsheet, I got to get it done today. If the body's not letting it, like if the body say, we're not doing that today, or we're not doing those percentages, that's my training. I kind of got to dial it back and adjust and listen to the body because uh we got to be healthy i can't compete if i'm not healthy so no you can't you can't and, and 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 honestly and that's exactly what i was hoping to hear from you is that you know you listen to your body more you've become probably more intuitive the lessons that you've learned through unfortunately the mistakes that i'm sure you've made right hey my back or all oh, my knees or gosh darn it this shoulder right like i, I shoot i've been there myself man um and it, it has helped me also frame the way that I program for athletes or guide athletes at an affiliate level, the way that I program for affiliates, because I think about this is we, we get into CrossFit typically because we really love the train and we love that feeling. We love the discomfort. We love the growth. A lot of times that's to our own detriment where we chase intensity so much or at such a high level relative to ourself that we often need a coach to say like, Hey, today, why don't you, you know, take a couple paces back or lighten the load a little, or instead of hanging from the bar, since your shoulders bothering you, why don't you try some inverted rows or ring rows instead, right? We'll go with a horizontal pull instead of just hanging you from the rig. So I know that as a coach and as a competitor, those things are really hard to make yourself do, which is of course mm -hmm. why I asked. And then, and then you said something really cool too, where you mentioned like, Hey, I, I built a pretty good base and this is something that has been a hard lesson for me. And I think it's a really hard lesson for athletes in general that as we start to build a base of something like strength or build a base of something like gymnastic skills where they exist, um, we might not be masters of them, of course, as CrossFit, we're, we're masters of none, but we have something that's pretty good enough. Um, how have you navigated, for example, something like walking into the gym and, and, and you know, passing up on the squat snatch? Or, or maybe going lighter at the squat snatch because of the demands that it throws on your body, but knowing that as you gear up to compete or as it's going to be asked of you, you'll be able to step up. Have, was that developing that kind of trust in your capacity hard to do? Yes. Yeah. I mean, cause I think like for my standpoint, my bait, I'll say strength is good for me. Like I'm one of the stronger competitors in my field. I need work on the gymnastics capacity um, but when it's a, like a lifting day, it's, it's ego. You want to hit, you know, show that you can still hit that number. And like you said, like I, I, it took a while, but now I'm like, I kind of try to live in those 70 to 80% and trust that like the couple times a year I need that big one rep, it will be there. Um, uh, it doesn't go like strength. Uh, again, if I live in that 70, 80%, that's enough. Like that 90, hundred, I PR'd my clean and jerk this past summer of the games um so i was like you know and i That's do not amazing, like the, yeah. I, I don't like the jerk overhead so i'm like uh doorbell rang come here cameron sorry uh, let me mute that one second uh sorry that. yeah you're good you can take a second uh, all right um yeah so it's with it's with uh you know, like that, that just showed that, that just reaffirmed that like, Hey, the strength will be there. You don't need to, you know, always, you know, go heavy, go heavy just for ego. Cause it's nice to, you know, show that you can still move the weight even as you're getting older, but I got to put the priorities in the other, you know, other stuff, which isn't always as fun, 
uh, like the gymnastic capacity and Mobility, mobility. I wish I would more, uh, more about mo mobile in the beginning. Like it's not the sexy thing to do, and it's also time consuming. And when I'm pressed for time, I'm like, oh, I could either do 20 minutes of mobility or I could get this quick metcon done. And I don't know. It's something like you feel a little bit more accomplished because you have the tangible results of the metcon, but you don't really have the tangible results of like, well, I did. I did pliability. I did 20 minutes of stretching or yoga, and, you know, but probably down the road, that would have been made a lot more value. Yeah. Preach that, man. You could say that a bunch of times and I don't know if half <laughs> our li listeners still want to kind of swallow that pill because that's a big one and it's hard to, hard to digest, but it is, it is extremely true. Um, you know, as we age, particularly, um, you know, typically we lose range of motion. Um, typically we will start to lose power and strength output. But one of the reasons is because we lose the ability to express it through a range of motion. And so the, the more supple we can keep our body, the more time we can keep, uh, you know, uh, or invest in ourselves to the, the nightly stretching routine or the morning stretching routine, whatever it might be. Maybe it's both. We probably need both, um, mm -hmm. especially those of us that are sitting at a desk a lot of the day and, and in a static position. Um, yeah, the more time that we can put there, of course, it's not the sexy thing. It doesn't look great on social media. Um, and it doesn't make you feel as exhausted and beat up. And sometimes that's what we chase uh, because of intrinsically, you know, our personalities and, and, and obsessed with achievement. But certainly the right thing to do, to say the least. Um, in regards to recovery practices, Mike, what do you what do you try to do on a regular basis? Um, you know, when you think about either gearing up for something like that's coming up in December for you, the legends, or even gearing up for the 2024 season, what, what, what kind of time and effort do you put in outside of the gym on your recovery? Recovery. Uh, I'm pretty good with, uh, it, within our gym. We have, uh, we have, uh, infrared sauna. Oh, we wow. also okay. have, we have one of the Novathor infrared beds. Like it looks like a tanning bed, but it's a full on infrared bed. So I've been with those for years, back and forth. Um, we just recently, very recently, like two weeks, got an ice bath for the gym. Now, previously, I hate cold. So everyone's like, oh, you got like, I would do the ice baths at the games because if you're just sure. out of the event and there all the barrels are there, everybody hops in. But outside of that, I was not I, just the commitment, you know, getting the bags of ice, filling up the tub or whatever. But now I put that in my routine because it's we got it at the gym and it's easy and it's again uh, if the sauna takes a while to heat up and get in there that's a big commitment I I could hop in the ice bath for two for two months no, I mean two minutes at a clip a couple of days a week um, so that's something new but like I've always been kind of infrared sauna or or that Novathor light bed um, whether you know just to kind of help with regular soreness recovery and then. You know, outside of that, I, I, I don't I don't do much other than just kind of rest on my rest days and a little swim or active recovery row, row days, stuff like that. Do you uh, do you quantify your food at all? Do you do you weigh and measure or track or do you go in through seasons of that? I just recently it's funny, is that up at Misfit at a, I want to say a quarterfinals prep, prep camp this past year. Uh, and all the, all the camp attendees are there. I'm in the back as well with some of the, uh, misfit athletes and they're asking, you know, who, who tracks your macros, raise your hands. And I didn't raise my hand. And one of the head coach, the head of misfits was like, Mike, I noticed you didn't raise your hand. Are you not participating or whatever? I'm like, no, I don't, you know, I don't track. I'm like, I, I, I'm old school, like three square meals a day. That's how I grew up. I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then he kind of delved into it. And he's like, well, you know. They were missing something, and and if they got me connected with M two performance, and it was like, wow, I I you know, it's one thing to eat, and then it's another to eat to perform. So that right. they got me on the macros, and now I know my numbers. And leading into this past year, I was like, okay, yeah, and I started tracking through an app, and it was eye opening. Like, wow, like like the amount of volume or training I'm trying to do, and I'm under eating protein. I'm, way overeating fat fat's easy to overeat and then, very easy like when you're training uh like competitively like yeah the the, the carb number is pretty uh high number and it's hard to get to and i was yeah, under eating carbs. you can you can enjoy yeah. that when you're training at a high volume right it's a That's pretty gracious thing. number you're like all right and i'm like this some days i'm like wow how much rice do i gotta eat right. i'm like this is you know whatever because I'm not, I'm not gonna just eat junk to get to those numbers but uh yeah, I mean, so it was eye-opening, eye-opening. I was like, yeah, like, you know, uh, so now I'm, I, you know, I, I've tracked it 
like with the app I uh, for three, four months. Now I'm kind of like, all right, I'm in the off season. I'm not tracking so much, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm on the macros train now. So uh, it, it was eye opening. Uh, that, that's to say the least. I felt better. I felt like I was performing better. So, well, good for you, man. And I and I honestly want to want to lift you up for sharing that because I think this is again a, a great realization for everyone that's listening. No matter where you're at, if you haven't yet began your journey in quantifying your food, that's truly the next steps of really a, a, achieving a fitness level um, that is unlike anything that you've probably experienced, right? Because we can think we've got it dialed in. Um, we can, you know, assume that we have great eating habits. We can even eat for wellness really good. Like as we prescribe as from CrossFit, you know, eat meats and veggies, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch and no sugar. We can do that and do it at a high level, but to really quantify and bring weighing and measuring into the equation is what changes your recovery, your energy and training, you know, and it could deal with nutrient timing, whether it's carbs before and after you train, it's protein uh, throughout the day, making sure you hit your minimums. But uh, the point is folks, if you, if you want to get to a particular body weight, if you want to have a particular leanness, if you want to feel really good on your gymnastics, or you want to feel stronger in your weightlifting, definitely consider uh, weighing and measuring your food and taking things to the next level. And the beauty is, because I've done this for a long time, man, when I got my level one all the way back in 2011, I dove headfirst into the zone diet. Like I was just all on it, right? Zone diet, weighing, measuring my food. I was like, okay. And I became obsessive for this thing for like three months straight. And then I was like, oh, I love this. Um, and then after I competed at regionals that year, I was like, okay, I'm over this. Right. And then I didn't do it for three or four, five, six months. But you know what? I stayed pretty close to still, you know, those those quantities that I learned. I'm sure you get you've experienced that already in your journey where it's like, OK, I don't got to have my food scale out and like always have my app open. But it's taught you habits and you kind of start to eyeball things to carry those forward then without being, you know, so detail oriented all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes all the difference. I mean, it really, really does. So like even if you just, you know, like I said, like did it religiously for three to four months and now I felt like I could dial back a little bit, but believe me, once I like maybe within, once we turn to October and I'm fully two months away, like I I'll probably go right back to the app just cause I'm like, Hey, I know how I felt going into this past games. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, whatever it's at this point, it's like, there's everyone's trying to move the needle just a little bit. Just a little and bit. if it's the nutrition, let's do it. Like, you know, whatever, I, you know, I'm going to try everything. Yeah, man. With my athletes, I always preach no stone unturned, right? We never want to leave any stone unturned. We always want to uh, reveal any opportunity for ourselves to get better because we never want to look back and wonder what if, what if I'd have just weighed and measured my food, you know, before that competition, right? I might have had some more energy or recovered better, feel better going into it. So, you know, this, this next question that I have for you, I think is overall, like, I'm curious about it because you are a family man. You've got three daughters, you're married. Um, how has CrossFit impacted your your children and as your daughters have grown up witnessing you put forth your hard work and having the opportunity to have exposure to other adults pursuing their health and fitness in an affiliate and then probably you know doing some working out themselves what what do you think the influence of crossfit has been like in their life uh i think it's great i mean obviously you know uh my youngest literally kind of grew up in the gym from like you know she was in the little carrier with me i'm like come on here we go you know um and then the other, my, I have a high school or freshman in high school, a seventh grader, and then a third grade daughter, all, all daughters. So they grew up kind of doing CrossFit kids. Like my older two did the CrossFit kids on the weekends. Um, they helped out once on a seminar staff. They needed like the, for the CrossFit kids, they got the blue shirts and they were on the CrossFit oh, kids so set. Cool. So I was like, like, we got pictures of them doing that, doing the demos for a seminar one weekend. Um, but it kind of showed like fitness should be part of your life. Yeah. Um, and my daughters are all athletes, they, you know, they play soccer and lacrosse and I'm constantly like Uber driver driving them, uh, all over the place. But they grew up like my oldest kind of is like a dad CrossFit, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, cause I'm the dad, I'm not cool, you know, um, but they still recognize it. Some of their teams train at the gym, uh, and it's always cooler if they could bring six of their friends and they, they work out. Uh, so they see the importance of, they could kind of like see strong women in the mm -hmm. gym. So, I mean, from then, like, I love that it CrossFit's like part of their life's accessible. Like they show like fitness is helping them achieve their, you know, they're not going to be CrossFit athletes. Maybe my younger likes it, but like their base that they got from doing this CrossFit and working out is tr making them better athletes in other sports. Um, and like my family, my sister does it. My mom 
who's 80, she just kind of says she's retired. So she's kind of she's kind of hung up her lifters. But we're going to see if we can get her. She's very competitive. We'll see if we get her back in the open. But my daughters get to see my aunt, my their aunt. Like she was on one of our regional teams. Like strong women, strong, you know. And she's a teacher, so it's like, well, she's a teacher, but also she's a super athlete. So it's great for them, you know. I I really again, it's it's so I can't imagine my life before. It's hard to imagine CrossFit without you know my life without CrossFit beforehand. It's just so interwoven, yeah. you know, from my job to my family. Um, it's just. I mean, I really, I can't express it into words. And I know not expressing it in words is part of this podcast. So I apologize, but it's hey. just more, it's just, it's special. And it's, I, I it means everything. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think you're doing a great job at depicting exactly how important it is and how special it is to your family. And, and of course I, I agree. Um, I don't even go into the affiliate on a regular basis. I do most of my training here at my own garage gym and just the opportunity that my children have to have access to play play in the mm-hmm. gym and what that yeah. looks like for them. And, and for them, that's all it is, right. It's play. And, you know, now that they're getting to sport age, they start to have an understanding like, Hey, if I work out, maybe I can score more goals in my soccer game, or I'm going to try to score a, football, a touchdown this weekend in my flag football game that at, should I jump onto this box a bunch? I'm like, sure, man, jump on the box. You, you, yeah. you have at it. Right. Um, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. The, the next question that I have, Mike, is about, and it's kind of back to where we started this interview. You know, we're, we're at a place where we don't really know what's happening with the age groups going forward. But what we do know is that CrossFit is designed to change the way that we perceive our fitness capacity over time, right? We want to increase work capacity across broad time and modal domains through age, we want to continue to age up. My question to you, man, is what, how do we continue to get in older athletes, master's age athletes, age group, age athletes that are 40, 45, 50 and over, 60 and over, and help them see what CrossFit is and get them into our affiliates? And, and before you answer, I'll follow up with this. If someone sees you at the CrossFit Games and they're like, oh, my gosh, look at that dude. Do you think that opens the door for them to come in or does it make it harder for them to come into the CrossFit gym? And what are those conversations like? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like I know there's always that thing with the masters and you're like, Oh, you got to highlight that you're not broadcasting. And like, that's who we want, you know, the biggest part of the community. Um, and yes, it's true. But like, dude, like you said, like, I don't know if it's relatable, like just how like the regular individuals may be looking at the, you know, the top, uh Madeiras and Roman and like look at these guys like I, I I would like to but it's a pipe dream like you look at some of these masters and older than me like there's some dudes and some women that are like you can't believe they're in their 50s and 60s and let alone what they look like but what they're doing too yeah what they're um, capable of that's right yeah I mean uh it's it's amazing and but I think like yeah you got to showcase it and like the more you see it, maybe it's like, all right, it's not as scary anymore. Like maybe I can do that. Like, cause you'll hear the stories like, well, Hey, you know, this guy looks like this now, or this girl looks like woman looks like this now. Like this is where she started though. And so like, yeah, they didn't walk into the gym looking like that or they didn't, you know, it, you got to start somewhere and it doesn't have to be when you're 19 and 20 and 25. Absolutely like you can not. start this when you're 35, 45, 55. Um, so yeah, I think more like, yes, highlighting it, seeing it, but then if you get more like background on like, hey, this is where this person came from. Like, uh, you know, yes, there are 10 times games athlete in the masters, but you know, they never played sports before this. You know, you, you, there's yeah. those cases that like, yeah, I never did, no, never did sports. You know, uh, this is just something I did and whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is a little intimidating, but I, we find it just regular group class. like. We get somebody who pops into the affiliate and they look through the window at what the class is going on and they're like, that looks scary. But I'm That's like, right. hey, you're already in the door. Like, we trust me, it's less scary in there and it's always intimidating, but, you know, you're here. So, again, the biggest thing, I guess we got to get them in the door. Um, so, yeah, I think showing the athletes, showing the masters, but, again, letting them know that, like, hey, this is not how they start. Like, you got to. You got to, you know, set the table a little bit. Let them know, like, hey, you know, just just come in. We'll work with you. Maybe that's not your goal, but you could get somewhere on that level. That's right. Yeah. And I, and I man, I, I completely agree with you. I think part of it is it's intimidating, right, um, to, to the everyday human and also a bit unfathomable 
You know, I had a great conversation with, with, with a friend of mine. We were, we were working a seminar, teaching a seminar, Joe Westerlin. And, um, you know, we were talking about how like sometimes everyday people that watch what the games are, they might be impressed by the physique of these athletes, but they actually aren't even fathoming what they're witnessing because these athletes are cycling 300 pounds deadlift up and down or, or, or clean, even in the matter if you're watching the, the open individuals, right? The men could be cycling 300 pound cleans and doing ring muscle ups or bar muscle ups. And it, they make it look so easy that all of a sudden there's that disconnection of like, I really thought three strict pull-ups for a woman was really, really strong before I started CrossFit. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about the traditional means of strength conditioning, it's like I'm, I've been coaching division one athletes who might not even be able to do strict body weight pull-ups, let alone now I'm watching these women who are cycling bar muscle ups. So I think a lot of it, and I say that because so much of it is how we tell the story and how we help people understand what they're witnessing and the magnitude at which they're witnessing it, particularly in the 50 plus, the 55 plus, the 60 plus age groups. And you hit the nail on the head, man. You said it every year. We see rookie games athletes that are 55 years old, 50 years old. 45, you know, these are first time games athletes that had never been there before. They weren't there as individuals. They found CrossFit in their mid forties or early fifties. And it's such a beautiful thing. Um, but I, I, I love this. I love this as a topic because I, I certainly like you feel like it's really the fruits of our, our, our community at large. Um, you know, we, uh, we always want to do our best at pushing, uh, the elites within our space, the, the Mike Kearns. We want to keep getting you back to the games, man, and setting the stage for what is actually achievable as we age through this methodology. But also, man, we want to be as welcoming as we can to the everyday man and woman who's simply trying to get in and out of their car a little bit more nimble than they did, mm -hmm. you know, a couple months ago. So I, I love that we're, we're trying to find this balance. And I think it's a very healthy conversation. Um, Mike, Mike, what else do you got to share, man? What's on your mind as I give you a minute before we uh, wrap this interview up? Is there anything else that came to your mind as we we had that conversation? Uh, just what well, we just touched on, like how the the I guess the games and the but like I'm amazed like how they keep moving the needle. Like when I first made the games in 2016, I was in the 40 to 44. To, our heaviest snatch in the end of a workout was 185, and then two years later at the 2018 games. We had a workout that ended at 245. And I'm like, we went from 185 to 245 in the same division. Um, but I'm like, this, those athletes that kind of grew up, the 35s are now the 40-year-olds and the 40-year-olds. So I, I feel like, I, like I'm hoping that the games are still a target for us because it's amazing that like all these 45s, well, now we're going to be 50. And like just the skill and the strength, keep, like I keep having to evolve. Like it can't just coast like, oh, okay, that's as heavy as I ever got to lift, or that's as much capacity as I need. Like, just like, you know, everything, everybody keeps at it and it evolves and like the needle keeps moving. So um, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing just to see like what a 40 year old was expected to do a couple years ago. And now what they're like, I'm looking at weights and volume. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, but I was like, Oh, I'm glad I'm aging up, but we're, they, they keep moving the needle as we keep getting older too. So uh, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's all I really got. I mean, I hope I hope we we'll, I still have a target to shoot for. If not, I just got to find something else. But um, that this is my this is my this is my jam. I, I'm all about CrossFit and uh, just ways to kind of from the affiliate level to the competitive level, just finding that balance. Me too, brother. Well, whether it's in Fort, Fort Worth, Texas, or if it's in another location, there's no doubt about it. To me, we'll, we'll certainly have a way to crown the fittest on earth in these age demographics, which is, I think, is what, what is most important opportunity, an opportunity to showcase the fitness and the capacity and the inspiration that our age groups really are. Um, yeah, man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on and sharing more about yourself and your fitness journey and your family and your affiliate. Um, where's a good place for people to follow you, man? I, I know you're on Instagram. You, you want to share your Instagram handle? They can follow you. Uh, sure. Yeah. Let me see if I can remember my Instagram handle. It's uh, Mike Kern underscore 416. And that was just my uh, rookie games number, 416. That's what, yeah. So that's when I first came on to the social media not the most active. I try to put some stuff in, but I got my daughters telling me like, dad, nobody wants to see you work out. Stop posting that. I'm like, all right, well, some people do want to see me work out, but you know, 
got to yeah, keep the family it. happy. I don't no, want to embarrass the kids too much. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That might be part of our job, I think, as dads, man. Is like the True. The I got to lean into that more than I do, too. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. And, and you remind those girls, uh, people are certainly looking up to their dad. They they might not understand how cool he is at the time, but one day they'll be like, <laughs> oh, people really were watching my dad work out, and they really like to. So I love mm-hmm. it. Well, look, man, I appreciate your time. Um, thanks for joining me today. Everyone that tuned into this episode, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of more than fitness. If you enjoy these episodes, please share them and do us a favor and make sure that you subscribe, uh, to our channel, wherever you are watching and or listening and, uh, do your best to keep doing sweet things, folks. You never know who you might inspire on the way. We'll see you next time.